Bianchi, also called Bianzi, Biasi, Bianco Lwo, Bianchi, Bosha, and Biancopa, is a West Himalayish language of India and Nepal. Estimates of numbers of speakers vary, but some sources say that the language is spoken by about 1,000 to 1,500 people, while others estimate as many as 3,300. Bianchi is from a region of high language density, that is to say that there are many languages among few people. It is the most dominant language in Uttarakhand, although it is not widely known outside of its small hill district and those who speak it have difficulty classifying themselves for central government dealings, the term Bianchi may also refer to the people that speak the language. There are also three variants of it, Pangjunko Boli, Kuti, and Yurjunko Boli. It is considered an endangered language, and it is most likely to be replaced by Hindi if it disappears. Geographic distribution Bianchi is part of the family of languages called Sino-Tibetan, which encompasses Chinese, Karen, and the Tibeto-Burman languages and extends over China, Indonesia, Siam, Burma, and other regions of Southeast Asia. Within the Tibeto-Burman classification, further classification becomes difficult, as some languages are not easily categorized around certain centers of likeness that make up the current categorization system. The Tibetan Kanauri group in particular is very complex. Bianchi is spoken in the Kuti Yangthi River Valley, near the Tibet and Nepal borders. The Bianchi area extends from Bayangs Pati from Budi in the south to Kuti village in the north. This area is located in Darchula and Munsiyari Tessels, Pitharagar district, Uttarakhand, India. Villages include Nabi, Gunja, Napalchu, Rongkang, and Garbiang. History The speakers of Bianchi believe themselves to be descended from the Darchula Bianchi people, high caste Parvatiya, and Tibetans. Until recently, the hill region where the people live was closed to foreign researchers, so very little information has been gathered on the languages of the area. Culture The people who speak Bianchi may be called Bianchi, but the people prefer Bura. In Nepal's national caste system, which the Nepalese government used to replace the three previous regionally distinct hierarchies, the mountain peoples to which the Bura belong are placed near the middle. For legal matters with the government, the Bura consider themselves Chetri, specifically, Matwali Chetri, which signifies that they align with Chetri in social customs and structure, but do not follow all of the practices of the Chetri caste. The Humla region in which the Bura are found is inhabited by three ethnic groups, the Bura, the Nepali Parvatiyas, and the Tibetan speakers, which are all distinct in altitude at which they live, economic activities, and social customs. However, these ethnic boundaries are not rigid, unlike in surrounding areas, ethnic accommodation occurs in which individuals, groups, or even whole villages will change their ethnic affiliation as needed by economic and lifestyle changes. The Bura reside midway along the mountains and make their living by farming the hillsides and recently cleared forest land. The Chetri caste to which the Bura belong is a high caste within the Humla region, though the peoples there are generally very poor. The Matwali Chetri are the result of acculturation of traditional tribal practices to Nepalese society in order to fit a caste model, the Chetri, they share marital, family, and inheritance customs, a ritual calendar, and life crisis rituals with the Chetri, though they, like the rest of the mountain peoples, use cheaper spiritual mediums for their rituals. Within the Bura ethnic group, the people divide themselves into two classes, Jara. True and Tibetan Bura. These classes are divided in that the Jara claim themselves to be descended much more from the Darchula Bayanzi and high caste Parvatiya than Tibetan origin and say that they ceased intermarriage with Tibetans long ago, while the Tibetan Bura do allow intermarriage with Tibetans and speak the Tibetan language. There is a low degree of intermarriage between speakers of the different Tibeto-Burman languages of the region. Dialects the variations of Pangjunko Boli, Kuti, and Yurjunko Boli are mutually intelligible, with minute differences. Even the languages of Chadongshi and Dharmia that share a small geographic region are mutually intelligible with Bianchi, as these languages are very closely related and developed in an area where speakers have communicated with each other's villages for years. In fact, all the Tibeto-Burman languages of this region collectively call themselves Ranglo, and the speakers are called Rang, and they may be called by outsiders, Shaka, and Java. 
Sociolinguistic patterns There is a high degree of bilingualism in Uttarakhand. Hindi is the official language of the state, so all written communication in addition to mainstream media and formal discussions are in Hindi, while Tibeto-Burman languages like Bianchi are now only spoken at home, between close friends and family. Bianchi is not written, although there has been a recent movement among its speakers to create a script for a uniform written language, which may greatly help preserve the language for years to come if successful. Many Tibeto Burman languages borrow frequently from more widely known languages. Bianchi borrows to a lesser degree than its relatives. Grammar Morphology there are 12 distinct vowel sounds in Bianxi, which are represented i, i, l, u, u, e, o, epsilon, a, p, and a. For consonants, there are 36 phonemes, represented as k, kh, g, p, t5, t5h, d5, n5, t, th, d, dh, n, hn, p, ph, b, bh, m, hm, ts, tsh, dz, c, ch, j, l, hl, r, our, s, h, y, w, r. The consonants bh, dh, and r are borrowed. Syllables in Bianchi may begin with any consonant except for r. Consonant clusters in Bianchi will only occur if the second sound is Y or W, which act as semi-vowels. One can typically sort words in Tibeto-Burman languages into the four categories of verb adjectives, nouns, pronouns, and numerals, though nouns are often derived from verbs but hardly ever vice versa. Numerals and pronouns are of the noun type in terms of syntax and affixation patterns. Bianchi has separate verbs from adjectives and also has adverbs. Nouns. Noun stems may be simple or complex. Compound nouns can be formed by putting together multiple morphemes. A prefix or suffix may be added to a word to denote gender of the person or animal in question. To denote plurality, the suffix ma may be used, or to specifically show the quantity of two, the suffix con or the prefix nis from n may be used. Nouns may take one of four cases, those being nominative, agentive, instrumental, dative, or genitive. Those which are not the nominative take suffixes to indicate case. Pronouns Personal pronouns differentiate between first, second, and third person in addition to singularity, duality, or plurality, with the dual being shown by adding the suffix i to the plural pronoun. Demonstrative pronouns in Bianchi will differentiate based on number, distance, elevation relative to speaker, and whether an object is visible. There is also a set of interrogative pronouns. The emphatic pronoun, API, may have been borrowed from Hindi or Kumaoni. It only has one form. There is also only one relative pronoun, Tazai, which is always used with API. Adjectives. Adjectives precede the nouns they modify and do not change form. They can also be used as substantives. Adverbs Adverbs may specify the time, place, or manner of an action and precede the verb which they modify. Verbs There are both simple and compound verbs in Bianchi, with the simple verbs having monosyllabic roots. Verbs may be treated as typically transitive or intransitive, and in order to change the meaning, they may take on a suffix based on what the typical role of the verb is. Bianchi, like many Tibeto Burman languages, amply uses aspectivizers, which are auxiliaries added to a verb directly to its stem to slightly change its meaning to something closely related. The change between a transitive and intransitive verb may be considered an aspectivizer. The aspectivizer itself cannot stand alone, although a verb without one may. In fact, some verbs will not take an aspectivizer. A verb will change form based on tense, aspect, mood, person, and number. Moods include imperative, prohibitive, indicative, infinitive, and subjunctive. Infinitives are shown by adding the suffix mo, sometimes pronounced m, to the verb stem. Syntax all Tibeto-Burman languages place the object before the verb. The verb comes at the end of a sentence, and typically, the subject comes before the object. Relationships of words in Tibeto-Burman languages are determined both by positioning in a sentence and morphemes, which may be either prefixes or suffixes. 
Morphemes may be used to reinforce the roles of words or to indicate their roles if they are not in the standard order and seem to be a relatively recent addition to Tibeto Burman languages. Kinship terminology Biongzi's kinship terminology is a symmetrical prescriptive type, meaning that the same terms may be used for relatives on both sides of the family tree. The family tree is not exactly symmetrical in terminology, but some terms mean types of relatives that are thought of as similar in the culture. An example of a perfectly symmetrical relationship is that the terms Titi and Lala each refer to the father's parents and mother's parents. However, many complex relationships have specific names in Biangxi that may be shared. The term Chini is used for one's spouse's mother as well as one. S father, S sister and mother, S brother, S wife. This relationship could be thought of as being similar to an aunt, although Chini is not used for one. S mother, S sisters. Likewise, the term Thangmi is used for one. S spouse, S father, one. S mother, S brother, and one. S father, S sister, S husband, but not one. S father's brothers. Numeral system Biangxi uses a non-base 10 decimal numeral system. It uses prefixes as multipliers. Table modified from Chan, note that Sai and Haja, R are borrowed from Indo-Aryan. Multiplicative words are formed by reduplicating the main word, for example, using pp to mean four times, from pi, or the suffix su, such as pitsu to achieve the same meaning. Fractions are expressed by local measurements except for one word, phi epsilon, which means half, and is never modified. Vocabulary Select a sorted vocabulary, not comprehensive. References